Hi everybody and welcome to another explanations video. My name is Dr. Jeffrey Hanna and today I want to talk about what we think oftentimes is carpal tunnel syndrome when in reality it may not be that at all. So firstly let me back up a little bit here. Carpal tunnel syndrome, what is it? Well carpal tunnel, true carpal tunnel syndrome is where the normal nerve called the median nerve that comes through the inner part of your wrist, for some reason right in through here, is getting compressed. And as a consequence of that, the nerve distribution that goes to here, here, and here. So that side of the hand is getting smushed, compressed, irritated. And as a result, you start getting burn, burning, numbness, tingling, that's particularly worse at night. And so oftentimes where people think, okay, well, I must have carpal tunnel syndrome because I'm having tingling in my hands, that is not necessarily the case. So I actually remember the, the case of one person many, many years ago who had surgery. They had gone to see a surgeon because they were, quote, diagnosed with carpal tunnel syndrome. And I asked them, it's like, well, where do you experience your numbness and tingling? And this person said, these two fingers. Guess what? That is not carpal tunnel syndrome. What they had, instead of having the compression here, they had compression going on somewhere else. So they had surgery that was completely inappropriate for what they actually had going on. Now, in particular, and where people would have carpal tunnel syndrome, quote unquote, on both sides, that's a much more interesting phenomenon. Because we oftentimes think of, okay, well, because it's of repetitive joint overuse, you've been doing too much of the wrong thing, you've got degenerative arthritis, whatever it may be, that it's causing compression of the nerve right in this area here. But I want you to entertain the possibility that what you actually have going on is what's known as double crush syndrome. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the nerve itself is getting crushed, but irritated, not just at one point, but somewhere else along its conduit. And in this regard, I want you to think of the problem as potentially being upstream. So let's say in the case of a simple river, okay, and you've got a, a local drought here, something is not right, the water levels are super duper low. Well, you can look and say, wow, we've got all of these problems right now. We don't have enough water. We need to work on this. But it's possible that the actual issue is that somebody built a dam upstream, and that is the consequence why you're not getting it down to that end area. So when it comes to the idea of tingling numbness in the, the fingers, yes, we can have localized compression, localized irritation producing those symptoms. But it's also possible that what we have is we actually have a more significant point of irritation that actually goes farther up the chain. So the course of the median nerve from its distal end, it's going to be coming like this and we're tracing it backwards to its origin. It's going to be going through the elbow, through the deep muscles of the arm, up through under your armpit, into this area here, deep on the inside in and through the openings, and it's basically formed by a, a series of nerve fibers that come out of the lower vertebrae in your neck, and then it joins in with your spinal cord that ultimately goes into your brain. And so that's the normal pathway of that kind of information. Now, it's not exact, but in my own experience, you know, if I'm looking at, you know, relative degrees of points of compression irritation, what I would say is I'd say, okay, well, this area here, usually is only going to account for about 10% of the total amount of compression irritation that you can actually experience on the nerves. 15% is going to be somewhere between your elbow and your shoulder. 25% is going to be coming from lower down in your neck where it's actually exiting and forming the, the particular nerve plexus in that area, fancy terms called a brachial plexus. But then 50%, especially when you're dealing with pressures on both sides, most likely it is coming from the spinal cord itself. Something is actually irritating the particular point of origin where that's actually coming out. You see, common things happen commonly, rare things happen rarely. And it's more likely when people experience multiple symptoms 
that what they actually have is instead of multiple different things going on, multiple different causes, they most likely have one underlying cause that just so happens to be showing up in multiple ways. So if and when a person I'm hearing, okay, they've got carpal tunnel syndrome or numbness and tingling in their hands on both sides, you know, unless they've got rheumatoid arthritis or something where you can say, all right, yep, I can definitively, you know, agree with that, then that's suggesting me it's like, no, the, the odds of two things going on wrong at the exact same time, it's far more likely that there is a midline structure that is actually involved. Now, the question that a lot of times people ask them, okay, well, why would it be worse at night? Isn't that, you know, the, really the hallmark of a, a carpal tunnel? It's like, well, yes, but not necessarily for the reason that you might think. And see, the reason for that is oftentimes when we are sleeping, we have the tendency to stick our head forward like this, whether we have a too thick of a pillow or whether we're lying on our side and we're sort of curling up with a little ball with the head going forward. What that effectively does is that starts to stretch the spinal cord itself. And if there's actually an issue going on here, that stress and strain, guess what? That's going to be putting more undue stress and tension on the origin point of those nerves. So if you've got the initial point of irritation here, and then you so happen to have something going on down here, that's the concept of the double crush, that there are two points of irritation going on. And this can oftentimes be or explain, you know, why is it people have, they go to the extent of having a decompression surgery to free up the median nerve, but their symptoms persist. Why would that be? Well, it's because, as we said, if you're looking at the percent distribution or the upstream pressures, issues going on here can potentially be more significant than issues going on here. So how do you know exactly what's going on? Well, the first thing is if you've ever got any a question is you need to have what's done is called a nerve conduction velocity test called an NCV. And what they do is they literally stick needles in through the skin into the nerve. So they find where it is and then they measure its electrical potential. If you're dealing with true carpal tunnel syndrome or any nerve compression at all, what you would see in your forearm, remember that nerve is going to be coming and tracing back this way. You'd be finding normal, 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 decreased, 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 which means that the sole point of compression is going on right here. If though, decreased, 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 decreased along its entire course, that means that you are most likely not dealing with a true carpal tunnel. You're dealing with an issue that's actually coming from upstream. Now, this can also be very, very tricky because to access, as we said, you know, these nerves in this area of your hand, relatively superficial. You don't have to stick the needle in very deep. This, and then especially when you get into the neck, completely different animal. And we don't like sticking needles into nerves in the neck. So what's important there? Diagnostic imaging, whether it is digital articular x-ray or whether it is cone beam CT scan. What it does is it shows the relationships of the vertebra. It also shows if there are early signs of arthritis. Degenerative arthritis is not simply because a person is getting older. It's a consequence of abnormal stress and strain wear and tear. And this can happen because you had a physical injury to your head, your neck, or even a tailbone injury, which caused a whiplash effect that so happened to knock you off here. And then you've got repetitive stress and strains that if you so happen to be having your head sticking forward, that is going to be leading to premature wearing down. So you can have this going on even in people who are in their 20s, even younger, especially now because we've all got phones and mobile devices. Point being is if and when you're dealing with the numbness and tingling in your hands, don't just look where you're feeling it. 
also go back and look to the origin of the nerve itself, because based on the odds, there's going to be something that is going on there. Always make sure you're having the neck checked out at the exact same time that you're having your hands checked out, because there is a direct connection. And you don't want to go to the effort, of course, of having to go through wearing the splints, going through a decompression surgery, only to find out that that was only a relatively small part of the problem, but that you may be able to have resolved the issue elsewhere. Now, oftentimes, it also does not mean you're going to need neck surgery. This is one of the, the merits and the values, what we see in the upper cervical chiropractic realm, is if you can get the joints of your neck moving, realigning, and healing and stabilizing and holding the way that they're supposed to, you don't need to go down the surgical route, and you can reduce the compression irritation to your hands in a gentle, natural, normal kind of way. So certainly in that regard, if there's any capacity, any way that you know we can help you out, we recommend always go to Clear Chiropractic, uh, excuse me, clearchirospokane.com, where you can find out all kinds of additional information and send us an email. We'd be happy to have a chat with you, find out you know what we can do to help you out there. So I do hope that you have enjoyed this particular video, that you found it valuable, that you found it informative. If so, please do like and subscribe and also share this with your friends and family. Why? Because that helps YouTube recognize that there's something important here so that other people who are experiencing these kinds of symptoms might be able to find the answers that they are looking for. And of course, if you are in the local area, you can reach out to us in, uh, at Clear Chiropractic Spokane. We've got two locations, one at South Hill, one up at Mead. My name is Dr. Jeffrey Hanna from Clear Chiropractic. Get well, live well, stay well. Till next time, take care. Bye-bye now.